fuck off. <laughs> I'm often asked in the comments of my videos, how did you get those drone shots with it flying so close to you on the motorbike? I answer, well, with a 360 camera on a selfie stick. If you want to find out whereabouts I place the stick on the motorbike, then stick around. <laughs> get it? You may remember I did a similar video to this a couple of years ago when the original 360 cameras came out. Well don't worry, this isn't a repeat since we have all new technology and I have all new tips and tricks. Okay, let's get straight into it. I've recently acquired the new Insta360 X3 and if you want to learn more about the camera then just go into my videos as I have done an in-depth review of the camera because today's video is really just about the placement of the camera on your motorbike. What I will say though, is that this X3 is incredible. <laughs> so I'll kick off with, well, perhaps my favorite shot and my go-to shot. It's with the camera sticking out the side of the motorbike. So I'll hop on and show you exactly what I mean. Now, my first tip is this. Previously, I would have used a double Manfrotto clamp like this. And I'm gonna tell you more about that later in the video as I still do use it for certain shots. But for these shots, I now believe it's a lot safer just to have the selfie stick mounted under your backside, certainly for this side on shot, because if in the eventuality a car is coming towards you, you can just take your hand off the throttle or your other hand, whatever, and just slide it in under your backside, just so you're a lot safer with any oncoming traffic. Take a look at these quick clips and just see how effective this shot is. Then of course you can come to a stop and change the camera around to stick out the other side of the bike. Now let me introduce the ram mount. This ram mount I use for the handlebar shot where you mount the camera looking back at you. But whatever you do, don't even think about putting the selfie stick on it and then extending it because it just does not hold the weight. And believe me, I know. Yep, twice. Any motor vlogger uses this shot as we all like to edit in the shots of ourselves on the bike doing the talking. Insta360 do a motorcycle accessory kit and this clamp comes as part of that kit. In my opinion, it's the best clamp you can buy rather than buying one of the cheaper ones. And the reason is because the ball at either end of the clamp has a coating on it, which really does grip well when you tighten the clamp. Now, like all of these angles, it takes a little bit of experimenting to get the best angle for your bike and for what you prefer. What I will say is that just be very careful of the stitch line when placing the Insta360 here, because don't turn it around like that, because then the stitch line will be right down your body. And Insta360 recommend the camera be at least 50 centimeters away from the subject to minimize that stitch line. So to minimize it even more, simply just keep the lens facing you. It goes without saying that every motorbike has a slightly different layout at the front, so you'll just have to be a little bit creative and experiment as to where you mount it. On the GS, I mounted on the wing mirror, actually likewise on the RS660, albeit it's a little bit further away, which in itself is nice because you see more of the bike. Take a look at this montage of shots and see how great this shot is too. Now this next shot is a brilliant editing shot. You can literally join two separate scenes together just by overlaying a couple of seconds of this shot. And the reason is because it has no reference to the landscape around you. The shot literally just looks down on top of my head and on top of the bike. 
So as you can see here, it really is a get out of jail free shot. You can pop this in anywhere just to knit two scenes together. The editors must love this shot. <laughs> So how I used to do this, and if you have seen the previous video I did a couple of years ago, I used to put the selfie stick down the back of my jacket and hold it in place with the back protector and my helmet sort of pushed back against the jacket. Didn't really feel too comfortable with that, I'll be honest, just in case of the eventuality of coming off the bike and landing on the selfie stick. I didn't fancy that at all. So what I do now is I put it down the front of the jacket because then I can literally see it. My head is pressed against the side of it. The zip is up, obviously, so it does keep it in place. And then uh, you can feel it slipping as well. So if you do feel it slip, you can always correct it with your hand. You couldn't feel it slip when it was in the back. It's probably the right time to say as well that with all of these shots, I only ever record for a couple of minutes just to get the right amount of material I need. I'm not one of these vloggers who rides around and keeps the camera running for the whole ride out. So this next shot I'm going to show you, I refer to it as the centre stage shot and the reason is I use it when I'm riding into a town or if I'm within a superb landscape as it keeps you within the middle of the vista and just shows everything else sort of unfolding around you. It's a really effective shot. I'm saying that, I've said that about all of these shots because they are, it still amazes me what we can do with these cameras. And depending on what bike you've got, you can either sit on it. It's not ideal doing it on the Aprilia because you can see there's a two-stage seat on here. So it's not ideal at all to sit on it. Um, I'm going to come on to that Manfrotto double clamp right after this next VT. And finally, back to the Manfrotto double clamp. Link below, by the way, to get one of these from Amazon. Uh, really useful and invaluable, to be honest, if you're doing this sort of work with your cameras. It's also a lot more comfortable than sitting on the selfie stick, especially if you are one of those vloggers who likes to keep the camera running for a longer period of time. My little trick when I'm using the Insta360 cameras is I always do non-sync shots, so it never looks at what I'm speaking, basically, so you can cut the shots in anyway. And that's why I only need like a minute or two of footage. But anyway, time to give you a few examples of how I mount this clamp on my bikes. <laughs> My other favorite shots is this one with the camera extended out in front of the bike looking back at you and when you see it on the screen it looks like there's a film crew driving in front of you looking back at you i actually think i use this shot in every single travel vlog that i do as it does give it a real bit of hollywood it really raises the production value And then another shot which is popular in my videos is this one where I have the clamp off to the side of the bike but looking down on the bike so you can still get a great shot of that vista below you. And just to reiterate, I've left a link in the blurb below so you can purchase this clamp on Amazon. So that's pretty much it folks. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you also learned a thing or two. If there is something you want to know, please ask me in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Remember, if you're riding along with a selfie stick protruding out any side or indeed the front or the back of the bike, please make sure you're in an environment safe enough to do so. The other thing to remember is please come to a stop even when you're starting and stopping your camera. It's literally a lifesaver. Once again, Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV, Salantia. <laughs>